Welcome back. Every Thursday, we're taking a look at a health issue or concern affecting many people, breaking the information down for you and telling you what you need to know to keep you healthy. Dr. Kalani Brady from the Johnny Burns School of Medicine joins us now with this week's topic, plantar fasciitis. Good morning, Dr. Good Brady. Morning, Kelly. Welcome back. Thank you. Okay, so plantar fasciitis, this is something I've heard a lot about. I know it has something to do with your feet. For those at home who don't know exactly what it is along with me, what is plantar fasciitis? It's probably the most common cause of pain in the bottom of the foot and the ankle uh, for people that uh, have pain in their foot and ankle. Okay, so, so what causes it and who commonly gets it? Well, um, the people that uh, get it are usually runners, ballet dancers of all things, mm. jumpers, uh, prolonged standing on hard surfaces like this surface here, uh, and walking barefoot can all lead to plantar fasciitis. Great, Dr. Brady, all things that I do. <laughs> okay, so uh, it can be treated though. How is it diagnosed in the first place? How do you know what your foot pain's coming from? Well, let's talk about how common it is. Okay. Uh, over a million people in the United States each year experience plantar fasciitis. Now, there are other causes of foot pain, but plantar fasciitis is responsible for a million cases a year, wow. so it's really common. Okay. Um, the uh, peak age of onset for plantar fasciitis is between 40 and 60. Runners tend to get it about a decade earlier, so 30 to 50, because of the pounding on their heel from running. Okay, that makes sense. So, so to distinguish then between the foot pain, how, how is it specifically diagnosed as plantar fasciitis? You go to your doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a very simple set of tests that the doctor will do to find out if this is plantar fasciitis. It doesn't need uh, any labs at all. It doesn't need any x-rays at all, generally. Uh, and occasionally ultrasound is done, but not very frequently. Okay. So, uh, it's basically by physical exam alone. Okay, and then once they determine that, yes, that is the cause, is there a treatment? How, how do you sure. go about it? Okay. Ice and rest are a good start for the treatment. Okay. Uh, ice and rest will relieve the pain. And in addition to that, there are exercises that you can do. And I'm going to demonstrate some of those exercises now. Okay. So you've probably seen runners hold a telephone pole and you wonder what they've been doing uh, when they're waiting for the light to turn green. They're trying to move it. They're right. pushing the pole. <laughs> That's right. So you can uh, push the telephone pole this way, or you can just hold, say, a chair or a table. Okay. And then what you're doing is uh, stretching the back of the heel and the calf for about 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, and then resting, and then doing this for a 30-second period again, and then rest again and then do this for a 30-second period again. Okay. The more commonly you do these exercises, the more likely the plantar fasciitis is to go away uh, earlier rather than later. Okay, so, so the main thing that you're stretching then when you're do, doing that is the calf then? Uh, it's the calf, but it's also the bottom of the foot. Oh. Because once you uh, push the bottom of the foot up, uh, then you're stretching this part of the foot. Oh, yeah, and, I feel that yeah. a little bit yep. when I do that. And wow. if you have plantar fasciitis... You probably feel it a lot. <laughs> a lot, but it does help with the uh, uh, pain. Okay, so, so that's helpful. Okay, yep. so icing, resting, and stretching can go really a long way. Right, Okay. and mm -hmm. uh, avoid walking barefoot, mm -hmm. and avoid uh, flat shoes and slippers. Uh, use over-the-counter heel shoe inserts for arch support. Sometimes people need orthopedic shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, decrease, obviously, the causes like running, dancing, and jumping. Uh, did I say ballet dancers yeah, get did. it? Isn't it that uh, amazing? And then a short course of anti-inflammatories like naproxen or ibuprofen may help for a week or two to calm it down. Sometimes in severe cases, you actually need injections of steroid but not very commonly, and surgery is rarely necessary. Wow, and you were saying this, this pain can last for months. Yeah, yeah it can last for several weeks to several months. Okay. Aggressive treatment, especially with the exercises, and there are some other exercises that your doctor will show you 
uh, will help with resolution. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Brady. And if you at home think you have this, again, head to your doctor to get diagnosed, and then you can really start treating it properly. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. It's Brady. Good to see you, Kelly. Great to see you, too. Thanks for being back here. Oh, thanks. All right, do you have your next topic yet? Uh, no. Okay. It's a secret. But we'll see you in just a couple of weeks. But we'll yep. see you next week on Wake Up Today. Yep. All right.